The story begins with some red-haired girl asking another girl if she's ready to go back now, and without waiting for an answer, says that this is where Pari began. The action moves to the castle. There are dazed maids, rejoicing that their mistress is awake, and ask to bring the doctor as soon as possible. At that moment, the girl opens her eyes and does not realize where she is. She wonders what mistress the people around her are talking about, and wonders if she is not asleep now. The girl stands up abruptly on the bed, and seeing the unfamiliar surroundings, tries to understand where she is, and thinks she is dead, while the maid, who is very excited, tells the girl that her body is still weak, she should not get up so abruptly, and the maid calls the girl mistress. The girl also realizes that she doesn't feel well enough. She has a headache, and she thinks her head is going to explode from the pain, but she still wonders why she died. She's trying to figure out who it was in her dream and what the bet was about. Apparently, the girl from the beginning of the story was talking to our protagonist. The girl lowers her head and realizes that she can't control herself because of the memories that suddenly came over her. The maid who is still around is still concerned about her mistress and asks her to tell the girl if she needs anything. Then suddenly a young man enters the room. He looks quite serious, and one of the maids tries to tell him not to barge into her mistress's room unannounced. The maid looks very emotional. She says that as the man himself sees his wife is very sick, with the guy going over to the bed his wife is lying on, and says he thought she would scream and throw everything in the room as soon as she saw him. The girl at this time is very much frightened by what she sees. She wonders who this man is. He scares her very much because according to the girl the guy is huge. The maid informs her master that the lady is in trouble, so she thinks it would be better if the guy goes away and does not bother the girl. The man at this time looks at his wife and says that it has always been so. He leans over the girl a little and gently touches her hair and says that his wife is once again very much pretending. The girl who obviously doesn't know what he's talking about wonders why he called her wife and whether he is her husband. The guy was a little sad after these words. He asked his wife to be patient a little longer, because soon he will not be in this place. You can see on his face that the guy is desperate. Then the guy turns and starts to leave the room, while the protagonist looks at his back and thinks that she is definitely dead, while she is very much surprised by the fact that she has a husband, although she realizes that no matter how you look at it, their relationship is probably bad. The girl gets a little upset and starts to think that something is obviously wrong, and then her maid and butler come up to her and tell her that the girl has just woken up after a recent incident. And the maid tells the girl that she should stay in her bed. The protagonist does not listen to her subjects and gets out of bed anyway. She timidly takes a couple of steps and reaches the mirror, where she lowers her head a bit and says that she still has a very bad headache, while we learn that unknown memories keep resurfacing in the girl's memory. She looks in the mirror and notices that she has silver hair down to her waist and very beautiful shining eyes. Also, her name comes to mind. And we learn that the girl's name is Sheriel Rolferum. We also learn that the girl is the first beauty of the empire, as well as the wife of the noble Duke of Rolferum. Also, at the same time, she is also a mother who neglects the protagonist of the fantasy novel, Torn Wings. Sheriel grabs her head and starts to scream a little. She thinks about going crazy because she realizes that she is stuck in a novel. Her subjects are watching the girl and notice that it seems that their mistress is very sick indeed. The main character is trying to calm down, but she does not understand how to do this because she found herself in a very unclear situation. The girl does not know what to do. After all, the story did not have a couple of lines about the main character's mother. She starts slapping you in the face and wonders if she is really the main character's mother or if it's just another dream, while the slaps that the girl gives to herself hurt her. And realizing this, the girl comes to realize that she feels everything, and it's probably real. The girl thinks about it so she doesn't realize that if it's true that she has to continue living here, when she finally realizes that this will be the case, the girl gets very scared. She wonders why she didn't turn out to be a lover or a minor character, because the role of the main character's mother doesn't suit her. She remembers that the original hero is the very madness of obsession. From her memories, we learn that he even killed the second main character. 
The girl realizes that she too can die in this world. She remembers how some girl is talking to a young guy and tells him that she will run away from him. The guy in response tells her that if she wants to run away, let her do it because he is generous. But he tells her that if he catches her, the girl better be ready. Because according to the guy, he's going to put shackles on her so she won't run away from him again. At this time, the protagonist also thinks about the fact that it was an affair in which the viewer had a hard time as well as the protagonist, a fact that bothers her a lot. At the same time, she realizes that now is not the time to give in to sentimentality, because the main character will destroy everyone who gets in his way. At the same time, she realizes that there are a lot of such relationships between children and parents. She realizes that in this case, she is also already in the risk zone. In the girl's head, as if there is a mental explosion, it seems to her that with her husband, she already has a very bad relationship, and her son in the canon will become a psychopath who will be obsessed with a woman. She realizes that if she doesn't want to die the way she did in the original novel, she needs to create a good relationship with her family before it's too late. But she also realizes that the problem is that she doesn't know which of them she needs to improve her relationship with first. Suddenly she hears that there is a child outside the window, and she's very much surprised that there are children in this place, and she wonders who it could be. The main character looks outside and sees a boy with the same silver hair as her. I'm dressed in blue clothes. She looks at him and admires how cute this guy is. Then suddenly the girl realizes that if there is a child in this castle, then most likely the cute boy she saw outside the window is her son and future psychopath. Even though she has realized all this, the protagonist can't take her eyes off her son. She says that she seems to have never seen his child, and still looks at the boy in surprise. She wonders why he's so cute, because it's nothing like the brutal image of the guy in the novel. The girl has finally decided who she's going to have her first relationship with, and says that compared to scary husband, it's better to pick a cute kid to start with. But at the same time, the girl realizes that she already has a completely different problem. She does not know how to get closer to her son and what to do for this. The action moves to the next day. In the morning, a maid runs into the girl's room and reminds her mistress that it is morning and it is time for her to wake up and have breakfast. The girl runs up to the bed on which her mistress is, not interested in how she feels, while in the hands of the girl is a tray of food that she brought for the protagonist. Sheriel tells her maid that she feels pretty good. The maid then tells her mistress to ignore domestic affairs and get well. The girl agrees with her maid and asks her if she knows how many days the girl has been lying after the incident. And we learn that the girl's maid's name is Daisy. The girl says that her mistress has been laid up all day, but the protagonist emphasizes that she's been resting for a few more days since then, so she's had full time to recover. Daisy tells the girl that it's all because there was a very big accident. They all thought that something had happened to the lady and raised the whole mansion because none of them could have known that there would be a sudden accident in the carriage. The girl realizes what has happened, but she is worried about something else. It turns out the girl is worried that her husband with whom she has a bad relationship came to her room, but there is no news from her son. She wonders if their relationship is really worse than she could assume. After that, the protagonist again turns to her maid and asks her if the cardicel is busy. From this question, the maid literally changed in her face, and it becomes obvious that she does not know what to answer. Seeing the face of her maid, the protagonist thinks that the relationship between her and her son is really very bad. But she realizes that she can no longer just sit back and wait for the finale. The protagonist immediately decides to ask her maid if she knows where her son is, and in response, she hears that the maid does know where he is and tells her mistress that her son is in the garden. Also then, the joyful maid asks her mistress will she go to the garden to meet her son, but the girl is a little puzzled about the original novel. It turns out in the original Cardicel didn't empathize with any of the feelings. She thinks about the fact that of course he's not like that now because he's a child, but she still has to get to him first, even though she's very nervous about it. She also realizes that they need to meet as soon as possible because she needs to know how deep their relationship goes. And she also realizes that it will take too long for her to fully recover while still waiting to hear back from her mistress. 
Realizing that she will not get any answer, the maid says that she has told her mistress everything correctly and advises her to get some more rest. As Daisy tries to leave the room of the protagonist, she suddenly asks the maid to wait a little longer. The protagonist gets out of bed and says she must see her son and asks her maid if she will accompany her to the garden. The maid is a little surprised at the request and asks her mistress if she's sure she wants to do it since she hasn't finished her recovery. But the girl says it won't take long and she agrees to be under her maid's supervision. The maid is very happy about this and says that in this case, she agrees to escort her mistress while the maid also emphasizes that she will help her mistress to get ready. After they went out into the garden, the protagonist looks around and realizes that before Cardicel met the protagonist, here was a very beautiful garden. We also learn that in the original he planted in the entire garden vines, in order that the protagonist could not escape from him. But this is not the main thing now, and the girl begins to look for his son. Suddenly the protagonist finally finds her son, who is eating something, and says that it is very tasty. The girl looks out from behind the bushes and again admires how cute her son is. She realizes that, apparently, he is very tasty, and he likes sweets very much. Immediately afterward, the girl felt a little sad, and remembering the events of the original novel, asked herself why her heroine had abandoned such a lovely child. The girl looks at her son again and sees that there is cream on his cheeks. In her opinion, it looks very nice. She also thinks that her son will be popular in the future. The girl is very much amused by the way her son eats sweets, and happily looking at him thinking that she wants to wipe off his face cream, the boy continues to eat diligently. Suddenly the guy hears that there is someone in the bushes and turns around and asks who is there. The girl and the maid hide behind the bushes, and then the protagonist asks Daisy if Cardicel caught her peeping, but the maid says that maybe it is so, because her mistress was too loudly talking about how nice he is. The guy starts screaming again and says that he hears everything. Realizing that Cardicel has noticed her, the girl comes out from behind the bushes and greets her son, but he does not look as enthusiastic as his mother and turns away from her and asks why she came. The protagonist said she saw him in the garden and asked if she could join him since he was having tea. The guy doesn't say anything back and thinks about it a bit. After that, he gets up from his seat and starts to leave. The girl is surprised to see all this and does not know how to do the right thing. But at the same time, she thinks about the fact that he decided to go to another place. She also realizes that she cannot let the guy just go. She catches up with him and kneeling next to him, grabs the guy by the sleeve of his shirt and asks him to wait a bit and not to go anywhere. The girl asks her son if he could give his mom some time. The boy at first is a little lost by such a question, but then he roughly slaps his mother's hand and loudly tells her that he doesn't need such a mother, with the boy looking very angry. The girl is perplexed after the act of her son. She thinks about what is happening and wonders if the guy meant that he does not need a mother like her. At this time, the boy runs away from his mother in tears, while the main character who is still kneeling behind the boy calls out to him, but he doesn't respond to her at all. Because the boy was running with his eyes closed from his mom, suddenly he tripped over a rock and fell straight to the ground. The main character behind the boy immediately got up from her knees and went to her son. A boy stands on earth, and all in tears tells the protagonist to leave and stop being nice to him. According to him, he knows that this behavior of his mother is a lie. The main character tells her son not to talk like that and to let her knee look, because the girl noticed that his knee is bleeding the boy at this time tries to touch his knee, which is injured. But the boy still reacts to his mom's words. He yells at the main character to stay away, emphasizing that he's already said he doesn't need her. Then the boy gets to his feet and still crying starts to run away from his mom again, followed by one butler and one maid who are concerned that he has an injury. The butler also notes that it's not safe for him to run like shit. The protagonist remains in the same place. She looks disappointed that her relationship with her son is so bad. At the same time, she is approached by a maid who is also watching her mistress. After a while, it's night outside. Sheriel is still staring out the window in frustration. She remembers the moment when her son was running away from her and tripped. The girl is worried about her son's health. She thinks he's had a pretty bad fall and wonders if the boy is okay. You can see the worry on her face. 
and we learn that she's worried that apparently Cardicel hates her more than she expected. The girl realizes this is a big problem. The girl realizes that tomorrow, she will hardly be able to see her son in the garden. She really regrets that she took away the only place for her child to rest. She also realizes that Cardicel was surprised and puzzled by the sudden change in his mother's behavior. The girl thinks about it all and guesses that she needs a way to gradually get close to him. The girl starts to write something on a piece of paper and while she is writing something, she asks if her maid is outside. Then the girl immediately hears the answer that the maid is indeed there. It turns out that the protagonist has written this letter for her son. She hands it to the maid and asks if she can give this letter to the cardicel. The maid is a little surprised and puzzled by such a request. She tells her maid that she realizes it may be strange to start only now to establish a relationship with her son, but she still wants to do it very badly. The maid is delighted with her mistress's behavior and says that she can leave it to her, for she says that she will be sure to give what her mistress gives her to the young master. The protagonist is glad of this and tells the girl that she relies on her. A few days later, Cardicel wakes up in his room. Next to him on the bed is a huge box, which is obviously a gift for the young gentleman. The guy opens his eyes and looks at the box and realizes that it's a gift again, and it's obvious that he's a little puzzled. Also, the guy is a little angry and wonders why his mom is sending him these useless things. After the young gentleman opens the box that was on the bed, he sees there a cute teddy bear, some kind of box, and a letter that was attached to the gift. The guy decides to open the letter first and read what it says. After he starts reading it, he gets a little confused. It becomes clear that the letter was sent to him by the main character. In the letter, the mother asks the boy if he is well. She also mentions that the weather is fine today, so she asked her to prepare his favorite dessert for him. She says that he can rest comfortably in the garden because his mother will not bother him anymore. Also, P.S. the girl asks the boy if his knee is okay and specifies that she put ointment on the gift. The girl asks him to apply this ointment and his knee will be much better. The guy remembers the relationship of his mother before to him. It turns out earlier the main character told him that the guy annoys her, but now everything has changed and he cannot understand why suddenly now she treats him so. Suddenly a butler comes into the boy's room. He asks the young gentleman if he's awake, and the boy is obviously very frightened and tells his butler that his arrival was very unexpected, and it frightened him very much. The butler thinks about the fact that Cardicel throws away all the toys that his mother gives him, but at the same time collects all her letters. Then the butler apologizes to the young gentleman and says that he was afraid that the guy may wake up from his knocking. After that, the butler asks the boy to help him change his clothes, but the young gentleman says that there is no need and that he can handle everything alone. Then the butler asks what to do with the box and the gift his mother has sent him once again. The boy thinks about it for a while and gives no answer. After a short wait, the butler says that, as in previous times, he will take it out careful that we do not catch anyone's eye, and the butler is already preparing to take out the box, and even took it in his hands. He went to the butler, who was about to take the box away, and asked him to wait and not to throw away the gifts so immediately. The butler was obviously happy to do so. The guy immediately grabs the teddy bear that was sent to him, and tells his butler to throw away the box, and leave the toy in the room. While the guy is a little aggressive against his butler, and he blushes, Butler tells Cardicel that he understood him and also emphasizes that apparently the toy was to the guy's liking, Butler still looking very happy about it. The boy who is still red, hugging the presented toy, says that it is not because his mom gave it to him. According to him, he will keep this bear cub only because he originally liked it very much. The butler is about to leave with the box and tells the guy that in this case today he will throw out only the box in which the gift was the guy runs off somewhere with his mover, but he also says that before his butler leaves, he has something to ask him. Apparently the boy has mellowed for his mother's behavior and is no longer so adamant against her. Suddenly the action moves to the mistress's room. The protagonist seems very happy about the fact that the cardicel has sent her a letter in return. She informs her maid, Daisy. Also very much rejoiced at this fact and congratulated her mistress on such wonderful news, the protagonist in turn asks if Daisy wants to see with her what the guy wrote them. After the protagonist opened the letter Cardicel, her expression immediately changed. 
The girl became much gloomier than before, and on her face you can see that she is very upset. It turns out that the guy wrote in the letter that the girl can no longer send him letters and toys. According to him, they are already enough. The girl who is upset says that she knew it. In her opinion, apparently toys and letters were too much. Daisy is also a little upset about the letter. She sees that her mistress is sad and tries to lighten the mood. Well, the protagonist says she's fine because she expected things to turn out this way. Despite this bad news, the girl starts to rejoice because her son's handwriting is so beautiful. She asks Daisy if it's not surprising that he has such beautiful handwriting when he's so little. Daisy says it is and admires the boy's quick learning. At the same time, Sheriel says that somehow she is very happy. Because she received the first return letter from her son, Joyful Daisy says that in her opinion, the young gentleman answered his mother because he does not understand her very well yet. Because the girl shows interest in him for the first time. Daisy says a little worriedly that maybe she shouldn't say that. But she's also very happy because it's the first time she's seen a smile on the protagonist's face since she got here. The girl thinks about it and wonders if it's the first time Daisy has seen her smiling. She realizes that she's probably never smiled since she arrived at the duchy. She also recalls the moment when she first woke up in her bed. She realizes that if she recalls that moment in more detail, there was no joy on the faces of the people around her. In her opinion at that moment, they seemed to be more afraid of what would happen in the future than really worried about the girl's health. This fact at first seems to upset her a bit too. But then, settling more comfortably in her chair, she laughs a little and thinks that, strange as it may seem, she can remember nothing of the duchy in which she has so long resided. The main character looks meaningfully at Daisy and thinks she might ask her maid about it. Daisy notices the girl looking at her and wonders if she wants to say anything. At first, the protagonist does not answer anything and realizes that she has no reason to hurry. Because first of all, she should concentrate on her son. Then she asks Daisy, doesn't he hate her more if she gets closer to him? The maid again admires the behavior of her mistress and says that naturally it will not be like that. She asks if the girl does not want to meet the young master in person. The girl thinks about this proposal, Daisy, and she asks you if she can go out with him. The girl is afraid that the guy will push her away again and hurt herself once again. And yet she dares to take this bold step and tells her maid that she doesn't even know where her son is now. Then the joyful Daisy asks what the girl is talking about. For all the maids on the estate know that lately the young master has been going to the garden, just earlier than usual. The girl is surprised by this and asks Daisy if she has understood correctly that Cardicel is now in the garden. But at the same time she thinks about the fact that she wrote him in a letter that she will not bother him when he is resting there. But Daisy interrupts the girl from all these thoughts and says that she is sure that the young master also wants to meet her. She tells the girl to go quickly and tells her that she will help her to get ready quickly. The protagonist in turn is very happy that the maid is so supportive. After this action is transferred to the garden, it turns out the girl pretended to give up and still came to the garden. She also wonders if everything that happens is normal. She is thinking about what she should start talking about when she meets her son. Suddenly she looks around and notices that the boy is sitting on a chair like last time, eating some sweets. The boy also notices his mother, but this time he does not try to run away from her and just looks at her meaningfully. The main character at this time realizes that in this garden is really her son, as Daisy said so. Sheriel walks a little closer to her son. Looking at him cheerfully, she asks him if the boy has hurt himself. The young gentleman still shows that he resents his mother and says he has hurt himself, but not as badly as the woman might think. At the same time, the protagonist pays attention to his knee, which was wounded. She is happy that the boy put medicine on his leg. In the opinion of the girl, it is a praiseworthy act. She also notices that the guy hasn't eaten a single dessert, although he loves sweets so much. And yet she was told that he's been in the garden since morning. She doesn't understand why this happened. So the guy had enough time to eat something. She asked her son if he had been waiting for her. The young gentleman blushed a little and thought about the answer and said that of course he had not. The protagonist. Obviously a little saddened by his answer, 
and told the boy that she thought he wouldn't come to his favorite place today. But the young gentleman immediately replies to his mother that he always came to this place. He finally starts eating the desserts that have been placed on his table and says he has no reason to give up this seat just because someone else is here. The girl is very happy with his answer and says that if he really thinks so, they can sit here together. But the guy who is a bit annoyed by his mother's behavior says he doesn't agree to it. At this point, Shariel realizes that the guy is still wary of her, but he has stopped kicking her out, and then she immediately asks if she can stand behind him and watch him eat. The young gentleman lowered his gaze to one of the desserts and blushed because he was embarrassed, but he did not reject his mother's request and said that she could stand here. The protagonist is very happy with his answer and thanks him for the opportunity, but she emphasizes that she will try not to interfere with his rest in the garden. The protagonist stands behind the guy and wonders if he's finally touched his desserts, while she also notices the childish actions reflected in his eyes. She starts to get very happy again, and as if she loves her son even more because she noticed that today the boy is especially sweet and charming. The action is moved to a week later. On the girl's desk is a huge number of envelopes, which are not even printed. She thinks about the fact that it seems that Sheriel Eck led a social life, but there is no end of invitations to various events. Right after that, the protagonist starts copying and pasting phrases with polite refusal, while she thinks about the fact that now there is no need for her to be sociable at all, all because she thinks she has no time and she is annoyed by it all. We learn that she is very busy looking at her son in the garden. After some time, the protagonist has finally written refusals to almost all the invitations that were sent to her. Then she tells her maid that she has only one letter left to answer. Daisy says that her mistress has done a good job. Then the surprised Daisy asks if she can ask her mistress a question, and at the same time specifies that her question may sound a bit rude, but mistress says that of course Daisy can ask her a question. Daisy dares to ask her questions, and asks if her mistress has been getting closer to the young gentleman lately. The girl is surprised at this question from her maid, and says that it is true, but she emphasizes that their rapprochement is very slow. The maid also notices that on the girl's desk is her diary. Daisy says that this diary looks like a diary of observations of hateful people. The protagonist is very surprised by this, and says that this cannot be according to her. She wrote only nice features of the character of the cardicel. Then the mistress says that's another story, and now she's only responded to the important invitations. So she tells Daisy to send them all away. Daisy, of course, obeys. After that, the main character opens her diary and thinks about writing in it. Today, we learn that looking again, she is convinced that she wrote only the cute features of her child, but she does not understand what is strange about it. Turns out she did write down everything that happened between her and Cardicel. The diary says that Cardicel frowns when she tries to approach him. The girl thinks it's cute. It's also written that Cordiel ignores if she talks to him which the main character thinks is cute too. And it's also noted that the guy first greeted her in the garden. In addition, the protagonist recorded that her son refused all the gifts. But it seems that he liked Bear. If you believe the words of the servants, it is also noted that the guy did not respond to the letter, which according to the girl is also a nice act on his part. Daisy watches as her mistress happily reads what she wrote earlier in the diary and thinks that apparently her mistress is really honest. Daisy is a little worried about telling the girl that if she only writes about cute things in her diary, how about showing the diary to the young master? While Daisy thinks about the fact that her mistress will probably refuse such an offer, she asks Daisy if she really should show it to Cardicel, and also asks if Daisy thinks they can get closer if she shows it to him. Daisy realizes that no matter how you look at it, the girl is definitely going to show it to her son, she thinks a little about the question of the mistress and says that, in her opinion, it would be better if the mistress just talked to him, while the maid thinks what it is obvious that the mistress is unarmed. The protagonist still has her diary in hand and tells her maid that she thinks it's a very good idea. Then the protagonist thanks her maid and tells her that she'll be back soon. Sheriel goes to the cardicel's room. She does not know where she is and how his room is decorated, also walking through the long corridors of the castles she lives in, 
She is greeted by all the servants who are there. Girl heading to her son's room thinks he's still a kid. So the furniture is probably small. She also thinks his room has colored walls. And she thinks it would be cute if he had some toys too. She gets to the door to her son's room. And standing in front of the door, she thinks about what to do because she's shaking so badly she can't even knock on the door. But still shaking, the girl decides to knock on her son's room with her diary still in her hands, and the girl thinks that she needs to be a little calmer. Only she knocked, and the cardicel immediately answered from behind the door. The young master asked who knocked on his door, and the protagonist at this time was very much frightened, and even jumped a little away from the door, because the guy answered a little faster than she thought. Seeing that no one answers the young gentleman from behind the door, the boy hesitates to go to the door and open it himself. After he has done so, he emphasizes that he has already asked who is knocking at his door. The girl stoops down to his level, and drawing his attention to the chocolate bar with the teddy bear, is healthy with her son, who is obviously surprised to see his mother in front of his door. The young gentleman immediately slams the door in the girl's face. She's a little frightened by this behavior, but she's used to it, and asks her son to wait a little while because she's come to show him something. After that, the boy decides to open the door a little again. Only half of his body is visible from behind the door, and he still looks at his mother warily. The girl is apparently glad that her son at least opened the door for her. Cardicel then finally lets his mother into the room, but mentions that he only opened the door for the chocolate that the girl brought, at which he again blushes a little, and immediately snatches the chocolate bar from his mother's hands. The main character looks around her son's room, and thinks that this room is quite different from what she imagined when she went to him because there is no small furniture or painted walls that she imagined. She makes sure that Cardicel has not thrown away the bear she gave him. The girl talks to her child and says that apparently he has not thrown away the toy, but keeps it carefully. But the young gentleman is very annoyed. He still shows that he is wary of his mother, and says that this toy was too hard to throw away. So he decided to keep it. Also, right after these words, he starts to hide this toy behind one of the pillows. After he finally does, he asks the girl, so what did she want to show him? She's a little surprised that he got to the main topic so immediately. But Sheriel was not confused, and handing him the diary in which she wrote down everything that happened between them, said that in this diary she wrote everything by herself. Also, after that she asks the boy if he wants to read it. The young gentleman pretends that he is not interested at all, but still peeks at what is there. The boy still takes the notebook from his mother's hands and begins to read it reverently. From everything he sees, he is incredibly surprised and embarrassed. Afterwards, he naturally blushes a little. Immediately, apparently from the emotion which he had not experienced at that moment, a great deal of flame appears around him, and the diary which he held in his hands is burned up, at which time the boy looks directly at his mother and observes that when she was frightened, the woman called him Cassell. The girl is incredibly frightened by what she sees and realizes that this ability belonged to the Duke of Refers from the original book. She also remembers that this ability could only be used by the head of the family. Suddenly after that her fear changed to great joy. She realized that Cardasoy could already use his powers. She was happy about it and thought her son was cool, but she was still a little upset that her precious notebook was burned. The boy then grabs his mom by her dress and tells her that if she writes something like that in her notebook again, he won't leave it at that. And you can see that the boy is a little downcast. But the protagonist is happy, and says that if he does not like such recordings, she will not make them anymore, while she thinks about the fact that it is very painful for her to lose her recordings. But thanks to this, she was able to see him like this. Suddenly, after that still holding his mom by her dress, the boy asks why she calls him Cardicel. The girl is a bit surprised by such a question from her son, but at the same second, he thinks that apparently he doesn't like what she calls him anymore. But the guy mentions that she used to call him Cassell. The girl again comes down to the level of her son, and holding his hands asks if she can call him Kazel. After this question, the boy does not answer anything, but the girl continues to look hard at him and admire him. She then reflects on the fact that such a pure child grew up to hurt others. She doesn't want to see him go to jail and hurt the boy. At the same time, she thinks that the child absorbs everything he sees. She wonders if his future will not change if she gives him enough love and teaches him to love. 
The protagonist also realizes the responsibility for his growing up and character traits in the future rests on her, because she has to make a good boy out of him since she became his mother. Then the girl turns to her son and asks if he can give her at least 10 minutes a day, while she gently touches his face and calls him not Cardicel, but Casel, young mister. Obviously a little lost by this question, and changing his face, asks his mother why she needs it. The protagonist in response apologizes to the boy that she realized everything so late, and informs him that she wants to teach him many things. She realizes that she has to teach Cardisil how to care for someone and how to love someone. She realizes that no one has taught the child this, and yet looking at the boy, she sees that he's thinking a bit about her suggestion. Then, the flushed Cardisil agrees to his mother's proposal and tells her that he will devote some time to her. But he turns away and emphasizes that only ten minutes a day, the girl seems very happy that the boy has finally made contact with her. She thanks her son for the honor and emphasizes that she will definitely not disappoint him. The action moves forward again for a while, and the main characters are already in the garden. She looks at her son and thinks about the fact that Cassell is a very charming child. She does not understand how he can become someone who harms others in the future and will eventually go to prison. She realizes that according to the plot of the original novel, no one paid attention to him and he did not know how to properly give and receive affection, with the girl reveling in the way the boy once again eats his favorite desserts. At the same time, the girl thinks that she will definitely raise him well, so that he does not become as he was foreshadowed in the original book. She exudes determination on the matter. At this point, the boy also notices that his mom looks happy, and asks her, What is she thinking? The girl who looks at her son in love is not lost, and tells him that at that moment, she was thinking about the best way to start the boy's education. Sheriel then looks up into the sky and sees white doves flying over them. She asks her son what he would do if he had the precious bird. The boy is a little surprised at such a question about the bird, and says that he will have to make a nice cage. The girl is pleased with this answer of her son, and notes that he decided to make the bird feel comfortable. According to the girl, this is just great. The boy says it is so because this bird will be precious. He says it should be locked in a cage so that it cannot fly away. At this point, it is already obvious that his thoughts have gone in the wrong direction. It is as if the protagonist is frightened by such an answer, and her beautiful pink world is being destroyed before her eyes. She is frightened by the words that the boy would lock the bird in a cage so that it could not fly away. But Cardicel still calmly says that if you put the bird in a cage, you can just look at it and admire it. And if the bird lives without a cage, it can just fly away. The protagonist realizes that his words already show and prove that problems exist. She realizes that no matter how she perceives his words, it seems he is already thinking like a harmful to everyone protagonist. The boy notices that his mother is thinking about his words and asks why she doesn't say anything to him. But the girl pretends that she is not bothered and laughing a little says that she is surprised that his thoughts are a little deeper than she thought, while she asks her son if he would like to read a book with her next time. The boy agrees with his mother's proposal, and the girl at the same time thinks about since when Cardicel became like that. She does not understand at what point everything went wrong, and thinks that maybe the guy was like that from the beginning. The action moves to the main character's office, where she seems to be completely broken, and thinks about the fact that the situation is much worse than she thought. She does not understand how best to train the castle. At this point, she is called by Daisy, but it seems as if she does not even pay attention to her maid. Daisy notices that the protagonist is not paying any attention to her, and decides to shriek to make the girl notice her. Sheriel finally comes back from her thoughts and tells her maid that she scared her. Daisy is upset that she frightened her mistress, but she justifies herself by calling the girl several times, but got no answer. Also, Daisy asks what the protagonist is thinking about, because her facial expression expresses some concern. It turns out that the girl at that moment remembered how being in the room of his son he used his powers, but in order not to reveal everything to the maids, she says that just in her head suddenly arose some warm memories. She also thinks about the previously burned records, but tells Daisy that they should not talk about it. 
Daisy is surprised by the words of her mistress and asks the protagonist if she has these thoughts because of the imminent return of the master to the palace. It turns out the protagonist did not even know about it, but she thinks that maybe the gentleman is the handsome man she met the first day she came here. She even has a picture in her head of what the gentleman looks like. Now, the girl has even more thoughts. She realizes that if this man is her husband, then accordingly, he is also the father of the Casalaw. She realizes that raising children is the responsibility of both parents, so she wonders whether she should try to get closer to the Duke by talking about it. Daisy doesn't get a reply from her mistress and decides to ask her if she's okay. She also thinks that maybe her mistress is still uncomfortable when the Duke is here, but the girl doesn't care about that because she thinks about getting closer to her father for the sake of her sweet son. Then the eyes of the protagonist seem to sparkle once again with the wonderful news. She asks Daisy when the Duke will return to the palace. The maid tells her mistress that if she is not mistaken, the Duke will arrive at the palace in two days. Daisy again decides to ask a question that she thinks is impolite and asks the protagonist if she will go elsewhere when the Lord returns to the castle. Sheriel is obviously very surprised by this question. After all, she had plans to get closer to the Duke for the sake of the common cause. Looking at her maid in surprise, she wonders why Daisy asks her. But Daisy decides to emphasize that recently, the protagonist has been spending a lot of time with the young master. Also, Daisy reports that all the servants are grateful to the girl for the fact that the mansion has come back to life after her changes in a good way. Then the insistent maid says that because of this, she has a certain request. The protagonist is also surprised that the girl has a request and realizes that Daisy suddenly showed power. Then the maid decides to make her request public. Bowing to her mistress, she informs that she knows that this request has nothing to do with the topic of their conversation. But she asks that the mistress be a little happy when the master returns to the mansion. The protagonist is shocked by such a request from her maid. She starts to accuse Sheriel of being totally misbehaving and wonders how bad the girl's relationship with her own husband is. Also, at this point, the protagonist slaps her face a little with her palms. Daisy, seeing this, thinks that she was very wrong in her request and thinks that such a request is perhaps quite unexpected for a girl. She thinks that because of the mistress, seems to have gone mad with joy while telling the protagonist that she will accept any punishment for her insolence and asks for her forgiveness. The protagonist is obviously not at all aggressive against her maid, and as if even happy that she has such a faithful assistant in family affairs, she looks directly at Daisy and says that she does not understand what punishment is in question, and also says that of course she will be glad to see the Duke. Daisy wants to say that she knew it, but realizes that the response from her mistress was not negative at all and is surprised by it. While the protagonist thinks that the hostility of parents is destructive to the emotions of the child. At this, the determined mistress tells her maid to immediately inform all the servants in the palace that she will give a solemn welcome to the Duke on his return home. She also thinks about the fact that since her sweet little baby is going to be a worthless person with bloody hands, there's no way she can just let it go. Daisy marvels at her mistress. The maid's eyes seem to start glowing, and she immediately runs out of the room squealing that of course she's going to get everything ready and tell everyone the news. Finally, the protagonist is alone in the room. She says that because of the preparations for the Duke's meeting, everyone will be very busy at the mansion, and she also notes that she needs to finish the documents as soon as possible. As soon as the main character is about to write, she suddenly thought about the fact that she doesn't even know her husband's name. This fact alarms her very much, because it's completely abnormal. The action moves forward two days and the Duke is already returning home with his knights. One of the commander-in-chief of the knights notices that something is obviously wrong with the Duke and asks if the man is okay. In response, the Duke mutters something and tells his subject that he does not really want to return home at which point another knight who overheard their conversation enters the dialogue and asks if the reason for the reluctance to return home is the lady. Seeing that no one answers the guy's question, he immediately gets cold. Also, it is because the eyes of all the subjects of the Duke turn to him for such an unusual question. At the same time, the main commander of the knight seems to ask the guy whether he wants to freeze to death. 
Obviously, this is a reference to the cold that gets him. But the Duke raises his hand and asks his subjects to forget about it, because they'll be here soon. So there's not much point in them just chatting about things. Then the Duke climbs on his horse and thinks that perhaps this time the lady will break down the door, although he generally doubts that she will be in the mansion at all. After they get closer to the house, the Duke is surprised to see that all the servants who were in the mansion have gone outside and are greeting him bowing. The Duke jumps down from his horse and looks warily at all his subjects who have come out to greet him. He says nothing, though he wonders why all these people are out on the street. Then the Duke's face stiffens in surprise, for a little farther on he sees how to meet him came out, and his wife, dressed in beautiful attire, and who exceeded all his expectations. The Duke continues to look at his wife for a long time, because he still cannot believe that the girl also came out to meet him. But the protagonist who noticed the gaze of the Duke also welcomes the Duke, along with all the servants and reports that she was waiting for him. The Duke is so surprised by what he sees that he can't even believe his eyes. He's talking to the commander-in-chief of his knights, whose name is AMO. The Duke tells his subject that he is hallucinating, and asks him to call a doctor as soon as they enter the mansion. But the subject is surprised by this request from his lord, and decides to tell him that it is not a hallucination, and that it is real. The Duke thinks about what is happening and still refuses to believe it all. He still tries to assure himself that it is all a hallucination, and the surprised protagonist who is still standing in front of him asks the Duke what is going on. After that, the cute protagonist with a smile on her face tells the Duke that there is quite a strong wind outside, and because of that, she suggests him to go inside the mansion together. The Duke, like his son, is at first wary of the changes in the main character's behavior. He looks at her and asks what the girl is up to this time. But the protagonist tells the Duke that she doesn't know what he's talking about and praises him for his good work. Then she tells him again to come into the mansion together. The Duke looks at his wife in surprise and asks you if Sheriel was expecting him. He also thinks that she may have lost her memory after the recent incident, and that's why she treats him this way. At this moment, the main character is about to go to the mansion, but noticing that the Duke has not moved from his seat, asks him if he will continue to stand right in front of the entrance to the mansion. According to her, she has prepared his favorite food, and asks the Duke if he is not curious to see what the girl has prepared. Duke, who still does not understand what is happening and why suddenly his wife's behavior has changed so much, but he still says that he is on his way, and the girl communicating with her lady-in-waiting says that it is time to act as they agreed. Daisy, in response, asks her mistress to trust her, and assures her that she will do everything well. Dear friends, and I remind you that if you want to see the next part of this interesting story, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and do not forget to click on the like button under the video. When this video will gain 40,000 viewers or 5,000 likes, I will definitely prepare for you the second part. The action of the story moves to the mansion. The Duke, who walks next to his wife, looks and says that there is no one here. His wife tells him that everyone seems to be busy preparing food and cleaning up. She also emphasizes that she asked Daisy to do this because she wanted to be alone with her husband. When the Duke casts his gaze on his wife, he sees the girl smiling sweetly. He thinks about the fact that he didn't even know his wife could smile so sweetly. The Duke then tries to put his arm around Sherielle a bit. The protagonist is naturally surprised by this, but the Duke trying to maintain his unwavering look asks what's going on. They reach the door to the dining room, which the Duke is told by his wife. She asks him if he wants to eat first. The Duke says he does. He turned around and saw the girl smiling sweetly at him and was even more surprised by everything that was happening. After that, he looks around in the dining room. The Duke turns to his wife and asks if anything has happened in the dining room. But the happy girl mentions that she has already told him that she has prepared the food and she also suggests to the Duke to go on a trip together. The Duke is even more surprised by such a proposal from his wife, who had hated him until now, and even blushes with surprise. But the girl also sits down at the table and tells the Duke that she wants to tell him something. Hertz, who comes to the table, thinks that all that he saw was a preparation for a conversation which his wife had started, as if he were as sure as possible that the girl could not have done it out of good faith. He clutches the back of the chair on which he will sit in his hand. 
and thinks that of course his wife would not suddenly greet him just like that. From his own thoughts, we learn that he thinks that Sheriel despises him. After they both settle into their seats, the protagonists begin to take their dinner. There is no dialogue between them, and you can feel the tension of the whole atmosphere. The girl is so tense about everything that while she is eating, she thinks that it is even hard for her to breathe in such a tense environment. The girl notices that during the whole meal her husband did not say a word. She thinks that this is too ugly behavior towards wife, who has been preparing his meeting since dawn. She is annoyed that the meeting did not go according to her original plan, and still thinking that she should say something, the girl realizes that if she misses the opportunity, then later it will be very difficult for her to talk to the Duke. She finally decides to address her husband, and thinks it would be appropriate if their conversation began with the atmosphere that is present at this dinner. The Duke is surprised that the girl called him, not interested in why she called him, as if mad with joy the protagonist tells her husband that she has something to say to him. The Duke, who continues to eat with a very frowning face, tells his wife that she can tell him what she wants to say, but the girl asks the guy if the expedition was difficult, and specifies that she knows that his work is not easy. The Duke puts Ida on his fork, and being surprised by such a question from his wife, emphasizes that she has never talked to him about it. But the girl decides not to hide her emotions and says that she is just a little worried. The Duke lays his fork on the table and not hiding his surprise asks the girl if she was really worried. While he also wonders if she would not have been more pleased if he had been injured during the expedition. The girl is indignant at such thoughts of her husband and banging her fists on the table says that of course she did not want anything like that. Although we realize that the Duke's thoughts can be justified because he knows his former wife, the Duke crosses his arms, which obviously shows his wariness about his wife, then he clarifies that the girl is doing something she hasn't done before, and to him it means only one thing, that she wants something. The girl is very much annoyed by his words, but at the same time she forces herself to tolerate, because she realizes that Sheriel may have treated him very badly and she also thinks that she did not expect that the Duke is so wary of her person. After that, the protagonist reminds the Duke that they have a child. The Duke again with surprise asks the girl about it. Obviously, he emphasizes his attention to the fact that fully engaged in the child, only he, and does not see the girl's participation in his life. But Sheriel focuses her attention on Cassell, and emphasizes that she wanted to discuss with the Duke how best to raise their child. The Duke laughs a little at this question and gets up from the table. After that, he asks the girl if she's right about the fact that she wants to raise the child she hates together. Then the annoyed Duke says that the main character has been acting very strange since the accident. The girl, who obviously feels quite guilty at this point about what's going on, gets up from the table and tells her husband that she's perfectly normal. After that, she comes even closer to the Duke and says that she asks him to think about it together. The girl tries to touch her husband, but he moves a little away from her and asks his wife not to touch him. He looks at the protagonist and wonders if she really thinks she can fool him, but in response, he sees only the confused face of his wife, who is surprised that he thinks she is going to fool him. Of course, the protagonist claims that her plan is in no way that, after that, the main character recalls the moments of her first meeting with their common son. She notices that the Duke is just as wary of her and realizes that he is an exact copy of his son, because he also does not trust anyone. She thinks about the fact that she wants to solve everything amicably, and to exhaust this problem. At the same time, the girl does not understand why her husband distorts everything. They are grabbed by the stomach, realizes that she seems to have a stomach ache. But even the pain she feels does not make the girl give up because she does not want to raise her sweet Cassell, the main character who will harm everyone around him. At this moment, the Duke is about to leave the dining room. He says that if the girl has nothing more to say to him, he will leave. The protagonist at this time tries to stop him and thinks that she is not even finished. Then she asks her husband to wait a little. Because the Duke heard the request to wait a little, he turns around and sees his wife falling on the floor. Suddenly, the Duke catches the falling girl and we realize that he is not indifferent to her after all. The Duke is trying to say something. Apparently, he thinks his wife is faking again and is trying to do something to capitalize on it for himself. 
But the girl does not give up trying to convince the dukes that they need to bring up their son properly. She says that she knows that the dukes hate her, but for the sake of their and the common child, they must bring him up together. At this point, the girl thinks that she really hurts. The duke scoffs a little and realizes that his wife has really changed and is not behaving the same way as before, while the protagonist finally faints and the duke takes her in his arms. After that, he immediately asks the two maids who were in the dining room to immediately call the healer. Girls who are in panic naturally obey their master. She is in a lot of pain, and sweat is dripping down her face. But all she can think about is that she needs to finish talking about Cassell. But unfortunately, she can't say anything because she is in so much pain that she can't even speak. After that, the Duke took the girl to the room and put her on the bed. The protagonist still could not think of anything but the fate of their common son. She asked the Duke why this happened, and she clarifies her question and asks why he treated her so rudely. According to her all the time at the table, the Duke looked at her very fearfully and did not say anything, according to the main character. Here anyone would get a stomach ache. She realizes that she is not even the real Sheriel. We also learn that anger boils in the whole body of the girl. She does not understand how she cannot hold back in such a case, and she also notices that the Duke is not as nice as their son. She looks directly at the Duke, who didn't answer her question, but yet, obviously a little saddened, after the husband sat down on the bed next to his wife. She asked him if he really hated her that much. The guy doesn't look at the girl. I lower my head, being upset, asks if Sheriel hated him. The girl is very surprised by such a question from her husband and wonders about what's going on. She guesses that maybe the real Sheriel hated her husband, but she wonders why it was like that. The Duke finally takes his wife's hand and remembers that even when he was just approaching her, Sheriel would scream and throw pillows at him. The guy starts massaging his wife's hand and mentions that the main character doesn't remember anything from earlier, but the girl didn't answer him, and because the guy pressed hard on her hand, she cried out in pain. The Duke is a little surprised by this, and I turn to my wife and ask her not to pretend, for he has not pressed her hand so hard, but the heroine says she is not pretending at all. And at this point, the Duke cannot understand anything, but coming to his senses, he again takes the girl's hand and says that her hands are very cold. One hand he wraps around her palms and says that even if she is uncomfortable, she should sit like this. The Duke, who obviously has feelings for his wife, asks the protagonist to be a little patient, because soon the family healer will come and it will be much easier for her. At the same moment in the room, runs into the family healer, who is clearly very concerned about the health of the lady. Also after him in the room and two maids run into the room, the healer who had no time to run into the room immediately asks the mistress if she is okay and tells the girl that he at the same moment she is looking at it. The Duke notices that the family healer has arrived in the room as soon as he speaks of it, and seeing that the girl has someone to look after, he gets out of bed and tells her to get a good night's rest. The protagonist's face shows that she is not very happy about her husband's departure. The healer, who is next to the girl, says that she should not move sharply, but the girl does not pay any attention to him and thinks about the fact that she has not yet agreed with her husband. She is broken because of everything that is happening and thinks that it is incredibly difficult to get close to the men in this house. In her head, she imagines her husband and son as two cats, which she asks to love her at least a little, because she gives them tasty beef. But in the girl's mind, the white cat, which is Cassell, reacts aggressively to her. And the black cat, which is Duke, does not pay any attention to her at all. The Action of the Story At the same moment the story is moved to the next day, the girl wakes up in her bed, still holding her stomach, we learn that she is still sick. She reflects on the fact that she only wanted to create a loving family for the sake of her son, and wonders if there is no other way to get closer to the Duke, in order to finally solve the problems with her son's future. The girl realizes that the attempt to eat together has failed, and decides she doesn't want to repeat the experience again, at which point she feels a little nauseous. She lies back on her bed and literally starts praying for a good idea to come to her. But suddenly she hears a knock on the door. The protagonist cannot understand who came to her, because earlier she told Daisy not to let anyone in. 
The protagonist thinks about the fact that in this mansion she will not be obeyed, and only two people will come anyway, the Duke and her son. She realizes that no matter how much she thinks no one else in the head does not climb. The girl gets out of bed, and not paying attention to the pains she felt earlier, wonders if it was Cassell himself who came to see her. This thought seems to help her recover immediately. She timidly goes to the door from which she heard the knocking, and without opening it, asks if Castle has come to her. Suddenly the door opens, and from behind the door, she sees the lollipop that she took to her son. It turns out that the protagonist really came her son, who apparently also has some feelings for his mother. The boy looks a little embarrassed, but answers that it is really him. The arrival of the son for the girl as if a holiday. She begins to rejoice very much, and in his head as if even performs some acrobatic tricks. It is obvious that the joy and the girl has no limit. But the boy turns his head away in embarrassment and holds out the chocolate bar to his mother, saying that he heard from the maid that the girl had a stomach ache. The main character can barely hold back from crying. She thinks only that her son Sam came to her only because she was sick. The girl once again notes that Casel is a cute, charming guy. The guy who obviously doesn't know how to behave at times like this is still standing there with his hand out, telling his mother to take this treat quickly, because according to him, if she eats this one, she'll get better faster. Sherielle seems to melt because of all the nice things her son does. She thanks him for thinking of her, but the boy changes his face and blushes incredibly hard when he hears this. He once again turns away and says he didn't come to hear this. He says the maid told him to come. But obviously, if the boy didn't want to come, he wouldn't have come. The girl once again gets down on his level and pretends to believe him, but still says that somehow she wants to thank him for showing her love. She starts stroking the boy's head and says that she is very happy that their Cassell has come to visit her. The boy is, of course, again a little surprised by his mother's behavior, but apparently he is getting used to it. While the protagonist is stroking his head, he just thinks about it all and doesn't say anything. There's a tension between the two of them because they're both silent. The girl wonders why her son is looking at her like that. She asks you if you have made a mistake, but the boy at that moment thinks only that the woman shows him care and thanks him. Suddenly, the boy moves away from his mother, and then the girl asks him if he was worried about his hair, but the boy holding his head asks his mother not to touch his head like that anymore. The mother apologizes to her son for stroking him and says she won't touch his hair again. But the boy adds that if her stomach hurts so much, she may not eat with his father anymore. The girl is very happy at his words and again asks the boy if he is worried about her. But he once again tries to pretend that it does not bother him and says that it is not so. The girl looks at her son and wonders how such a bad liar can be so nice. But she tells him that she still has to eat with his father, because according to her, if she gets used to it, everything will be fine. The boy is touched by the words that his mother should try. He even emphasizes it and asks her if she has now said that she will try. The protagonist says that of course she will, because his father is also her husband. But she thinks about the fact that she does not like to eat with scary people but she is still willing to do it for him. Suddenly, the young gentleman changed his face and asked his mother if it was more important than him. The girl, of course, says that there is nothing more important than her son. But it becomes obvious that the boy did not like something very much. Dear friends, and if you want to know what happened next in this story, from what the boy so much excited, or whether the relationship between mother and son and between wife and husband then be sure to subscribe to the channel, do not forget to click on the bell, and of course click on the like under this video. When it will gain 40,000 views and 5,000 likes, I will definitely do for you the second part.